There are actually studies that show vegetarians have less heart disease than carnivores. Absolutely, um, and that's not necessarily because of the fats. You know, initially, many years ago, mm -hmm. people were told avoid uh, fats like butter. Saturated um, fats. Yeah. Yes, and uh, they then introduced margarine, which in fact turned out to be mm -hmm. the worst thing for the heart. So uh, refined hydrogenated vegetable oils are now a leading cause of heart disease. So um, that, you know, they got that. Um, then they uh, thought, uh, you know, cholesterol is you know, caused by fat, the villain, the big and uh, villain, yes. so they banned fat from mm -hmm. the diet, and uh, they found that is that by backfired too. Mm -hmm. So fat is not, if it's healthy fats, uh, they have nothing to do with heart disease. In fact, coconut oil, which they uh, right. banned uh, in the early years and replaced with margarines, that uh, turned out to be a great protector for heart disease. So it helps with heart disease. Um, olive oil is a great uh, protector mm. of heart disease. That's why in the Mediterranean diet, where they use a lot of olive oil, they have a very low incidence, or used to have, until mm -hmm. they started overeating protein as well, okay. um, that they had a very, very, very low incidence of heart disease. And uh, so the fats are you know, really out of the equation, except the harmful fats, which mm -hmm. can definitely cause heart problems. The protein factor, when you eat meat and you heat it, you create um, very harmful chemicals, uh, particularly the grilled, when you have these um, mm -hmm. you know, outdoor, you right. know, where they make the, they, they found that when you heat the, the, uh, the meat and it drops, the, the oil or fat drops uh, to the, you know, into the fire, and that creates gases oh. that are then trapped in the meat and they found that they are one of the leading causes of heart disease now. So they can da damage blood vessels and, uh, yeah, and cause cancers so, and diabetes. So all of the Inflammation, three Inflammation, right? And it creates an inflammatory response. Now when you have like, the, the protein coming into uh, the body, typically the liver tries to break down as much protein as possible. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't enter the bloodstream you know, or, or enter the the blood vessel walls, but many of the proteins that are left over in the blood, they will be dumped into the connective tissues surrounding the cells. Uh -huh. And once they are saturated that, you are affecting the, blood, the oxygenation of the cells, which can mm -hmm. cause cancer, mm -hmm. one thing. Um, so it's the same causes that cause diabetes, cancer, heart mm -hmm. disease, same causes. So they're not separate illnesses. In the early days um, of the 40s or 50s, they considered all three diseases the same disease. They did? Was, yeah, so we're so not they just separate. manifest differently. They started saying, well, yeah. let's make it a separate illness and we can treat it separately. Oh. Another mm -hmm. illness, another okay. illness. So originally they were the same illness because they have the same causes and they have the same if, you know, mm -hmm. you know, things that cause them. So the blood vessel walls getting too thick, the membranes accumulate all that protein and mm -hmm. then the the damage uh, occurs in the blood vessel walls. So let's say a coronary artery, where the blood pressure is the strongest, will start stressing that thickened artery wall, that stiff wall. Mm -hmm. The blood pressure is starting to rise because the blood vessel no longer dilates properly. Right. Sure. And then you have the wounds and lesions created, the breakages, the little your damaged uh, parts of the blood vessel. And then that can release a blood clot, which can enter the bloodstream, enter the heart or the brain, cause a stroke or a heart attack. Now, heart attacks are caused by blood clots mm -hmm. that are released from the wounds and lesions. So in order to prevent that from happening, the body will use cholesterol, the so-called bad cholesterol, mm -hmm to start bandaging those wounds so that they don't release blood clots. Okay. And so the bandage is what we call arteriosclerosis. Again, it is very far-fetched, in my opinion, to call that a disease when it is a protective mechanism to prevent multiple heart attacks from occurring. So what we call disease is actually a, a survival mechanism to prevent heart attacks. Now, heart attacks occur not because people have an occluded blood vessel, where the blood vessel is like 80% mm -hmm. occluded. They think that causes the heart attack, but it doesn't. It doesn't. No. The heart attacks are caused by the 
early patches, the initial patches, mm -hmm. the soft patches, not the hard crusty occlusions, the soft patches where the cholesterol has attached itself to the artery wall mm. to prevent a blood clot from escaping oh, okay. and causing a heart attack. But if the blood pressure is high and you're, let's say, um, over-exercise or you get stressed and you have a contraction of, um, you, you have a shortage of blood you know, flowing uh, in, the, you know, in certain parts of the body and in others you have too much, that's a fight or flight response then you may suddenly have a heart attack because that patch uh, of the, the, the mm -hmm. cholesterol in your piece is uh, coming loose and the blood clot behind is you're escaping and causing a heart attack or a stroke. So the, this doesn't happen with the occlusion. The occlusion may make you feel short, you know, develop shortage of breath, you may have angina, pain, mm -hmm. but you don't develop a heart attack from that. The body will eventually create its own bypass operations. It will uh, you know, use the capillaries from one part of the artery mm -hmm. and create several bypasses to the uh, part behind the blockage so that now you have a, an increased blood flow and you continue having a normal blood flow. And the fir they first discovered that in Korean soldiers that uh, had 100% occluded blood vessel, totally blocked. All right. They didn't die from heart attacks, they died from bullet wounds and they had no sign of infarctation, so they didn't die from heart attacks, ever. So they made their by bypasses. They found they had more blood after the occlusion than before because mm. of their own bypasses. But you, you, by their internal bypasses. Yes, the body makes that. So again, that's not the main reason um, for heart attacks. That's why when they put stents into mm -hmm. the arteries, yes. or they have a balloon you know, put in, or they have a bypass operation, it doesn't change the mortality rate from heart attacks whatsoever. It has never gone down. So the reason is because it doesn't, it doesn't change the thing with, with the little initial um, wounds and lesions that are patched up by mm -hmm. the cholesterol. It doesn't change that because the, the main risk is the inflammation in the artery wall itself. That's why the C-reactive protein is a much better indicator for mm -hmm. heart disease than cholesterol levels okay. uh, or any other measure. So when you have inflammation in the artery wall, that shows there is something in there the body is reacting to, and in most cases it's protein, in some cases it's you know, fat, trans fatty acids that mm -hmm. you, know, you react to, or uh, cigarette you know, chemicals from, mm -hmm. you know, from right. smoking and uh, damaged you know, proteins, plasma proteins that get caught in those areas when you eat certain foods that are so acidic, like drink a Coke, mm -hmm. you put yourself at risk for heart, you know, heart attacks. Or there is a study to show if you eat a steak at night in the evening, mm -hmm. when the digestion is so low compared to at lunchtime, um, you, are, you, are, you have a much higher risk of dying a heart from a heart attack the next morning. 